Hey guys, welcome back again to Tennis Picks and Bets here on the Mayo Media Network. I'm John. You can find me on Twitter at JRTweetsTennis. It was a rainy first day of action at Roland Garros. Plenty of matches actually pushed to day two on Tuesday. And one of those includes Liam Brody against Marco Cecchinato that I gave out yesterday. So just the two plays for today. They're still ongoing as we record. So lots of action still taking place at Wimbledon into the evening before they lose sunlight uh, for the night and have to wrap things up. Before we get started on Tuesday's plays, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the Mayo Media Network. Head over to Daily Fantasy Sports Picks and Bets, The Mix, and rate, review, and subscribe at whatever podcast app you use. Now, let's get to tomorrow's plays. We have a mix of men and women this time. The first is Alex Bolt, minus one and a half sets against Philip Krajinovic at plus 105. Alternatively, you can take the minus three games line as well, but I like the plus money in this spot for a few reasons. First, Alex Bolt is in form. He did win a challenger. That is how he got his wild card into the main draw. Wimbledon is famous for this, giving wild cards to people who perform well in the shortened grass season right into the main draw as a reward. I kind of like that policy, and Alex Bolt is someone who fits that mold. He's also got a flat, big, lefty game. Uh, an, he's an Aussie who the, the Aussies also have plenty of grass courts, and you see plenty of them succeed despite having lower rankings uh, than many of their opponents. They often come through in big spots on grass. Uh, another country that is somewhat used to playing on the surface. That's a big factor, as we've talked about in previous videos going up against Philip Krajinovic. Philip Krajinovic does not inspire much. His form has been horrible of late. He also has never won a main draw match at the ATP World Tour level on grass, and he hasn't won a professional match on grass since 2014, since 2015, rather, in any capacity. I'm going to go ahead and back the slight favorite here, try and get it to plus money with, with minus one and a half sets. That means they either win three nothing or three one in terms of set scores against someone who's out of form and just frankly does not like the grass. The final two plays will come from the women's draw. The first, Ellen Perez plus three and a half games against Clara Burel. Another Aussie we're going to back in this one. She came through qualities and actually was really, really impressive. She took down two quality players that, that, uh, are good on grass in their own ways. One up, one young and up, um, up and comer, another uh, big server, and then the one clay court player she did play. She beat six love six three in convincing fashion, as you'd hope to see. The form is there, and she again the Aussies can move really well on this surface. They're a little more used to it than most Europeans or North Americans are, and. The way she was buzzing around the court in qualifiers was absolutely incredible. She can really flatten out that two-handed backhand, and she can serve wide as a lefty on that on that ad side of the court, which is another thing we look for. We're going to continue to back these lefties that are comfortable on the surface in these spots. Again, the rankings don't reflect that she is going to be, you know, somewhat competitive against Burrell, ranked way outside of the top 200. But the comfort on grass and the form entering this week, I like to see. Clara Birel is a good young French player. Not nearly as accustomed to the grass just yet. And I wasn't as impressed with her qualifying victories, particularly needing three sets to get through Sasha victory in a match that she should have been able to take down more easily. So once again, Perez plus three and a half games. This one at minus 105. Finally, I want to talk about Anna Konyu, one of the best stories of this season, in my opinion anyway, on the WTA Tour, returning from injury after injury that's plagued her for years. Remember, she was a top 25 player in her late teens at all the potential in the world before years of injuries uh, kind of set her back. But she is back on tour. She's looked strong. She qualified for Roland Garros. And her power game is actually more suited here on the grass at Wimbledon. Once again, came through qualifiers, is in form, has the power. And her final qualifying match against Svetlana Peronkova, those might have been the two best players in that massive qualifying field. They should really never have come up against each other. Alas, they did get put in the same section. And Kanyu came through that match. I was really impressed. So I'm going to back her here. Minus three games against Sarah Cerebes Tormo, also at minus 105. Look, Tormo had a decent hardcore season, was actually pretty impressive. Known primarily as a clay court specialist entering 2021, she looked really strong in some of those Mexic smaller Mexican 250 tournaments uh, on hard courts. However, she got to clay, which is her preferred surface, and actually didn't look nearly as strong as she should have. And then you get her onto grass where that, that high bouncing, 
pushing defensive game doesn't work nearly as well, especially against a young, talented power player. I'm going to go ahead and lay the games here. That is all for this video. The DFS stuff is a little tougher with all the rain and without with the order of play for Tuesday not coming out yet. And DraftKings does start uh, the contest a bit later, meaning we don't know which matches will be included. So if you have any questions about DFS lineups once they come out or certain players, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. Ask me a question there, at JRTweets. Tennis. I had someone message today about some DFS stuff. Feel free. I'm up early in the morning to watch all the Wimbledon action, and we'll get back to you relatively quickly. Um, and before the contest start, they again they don't usually include the first matches on court at 6 a.m. Eastern time or 3 a.m. Pacific, and generally start later in the morning. So plenty of time to get those questions in. Thanks a bunch for watching, guys. Remember, rate, review, subscribe at Daily Fantasy Sports Picks and Bets, the Mix at whatever podcast app you listen to for the audio version.